Hi everybody, welcome to today's celebration of the Holy Mass from our magnificent cathedral. Thank you for watching. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus' real presence in the Eucharist is the good news of Easter. He has been raised from the dead and is with us until the end of time. This Easter season, stay close to Jesus and his mother Mary. Give witness to the gospel messages and be ready to receive the love and mercy only God can give.
Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Joseph the Workman, especially our visitors. Thank you for joining us in worship. We also greet and welcome those who are joining us in prayer from home. We worship God as one. In the Easter season, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, who therefore has become the light which entered into the world. His light shines through us in the word of God, proclaimed in the Eucharist celebrated. Christ our King is for us all a beacon of light and a beacon of hope. Our celebrant is Monsignor Gillis. Please stand to sing the opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning to all of you on this Mother's Day, so a blessed Mother's Day to all of you beautiful women out there who said yes to the gift of life. Today we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. And for the times that we have neglected to listen to the voice of God, our Good Shepherd, this past week, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on to Perga and reached Antioch and Phasida. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contra contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were so delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. 
The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecu persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook off the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. One of the elders said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. For the one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or heat strike them. For the lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to the springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Amen. 
Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. to all of you and a special welcome to our visitors today, perhaps in town, visiting mom. So once again, happy Mother's Day uh, to all of you. The point of catechesis today is yesterday, May 7th. In 1962, 60 years ago, two rites occurred in this sacred space well, to make it a sacred space, to take it from being a regular old nothing building and to set aside it for the worship of God. May 7th was the day that the cathedral was consecrated, and then seven days later on May 14th is the day that the cathedral was dedicated. Two rites back then, now it's just one. And so, Today, on, um, well, yesterday on May 7th, we celebrated May 14th. And you ask, why do you do that when it should be on the 14th? Well, the 14th of May is the Feast of St. Matthias, an impossible, and you can't bump him. So the church perpetually moves the dedication to the day of consecration, and we celebrate it on this day. That's why you see the candles still lit from yesterday. Uh, we celebrated the 8 a.m. Mass and the ordination to the diaconate of, of 11 men, uh, and those, we celebrated the Mass of the dedication. Uh, just like a solemnity as a Sunday, just like we're doing today. This edifice, this glorious temple of God that we call home, exists for the sole purpose of one day helping us to make heaven our home. And we put a lot of work and effort into keeping this grand edifice uh, beautiful. Uh, we've all been painfully a part of this. Uh, maybe even um, in a privileged sense to be a part of its restoration. And, and we're getting close to the end. The scaffolding was supposed to be down by mid-May. Well, guess what? That's next week. And I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm really hoping and praying that by June 1st, we will have our cathedral back. And to celebrate all of the hard work and the effort and everything that we are doing here, both physically and spiritually, we are going to have a grand affair to celebrate this great work by all of us. So save the date. It's September 11th, and I talk about this in my um, column. So please read about that. And September 11th is actually a perfect day to celebrate that, and you'll find out why. The idea in the celebration and all these months leading up to it is really to get the whole body of Christ, the whole parish, uh, involved in this effort somehow, some way. Uh, we are a family, and everybody has skin in the game in the family. And so, too, for this, we want everyone to be involved in some capacity, if only to pray for good weather and its success. Uh, and I want this to be an event that pulls all of us uh, together. Another project on the near horizon, as you probably know, is the Beacon of Light, Beacon of Hope effort. And the idea is to light up the outside of the cathedral. But there's a spiritual reality behind that. 
The whole purpose of this place is order to provide a, a sacred environment in which we can worship God, to celebrate the Eucharist, the greatest gift that we currently have in the world, which, oddly enough, was brought about through an act of betrayal. So somehow God works good out of all of these things. We're going to see that again in a minute. And the purpose of worship, the Eucharist, is to turn us into the body of Christ, to be divinized, with a small d, and to go, to turn us outward into the world, uh, to be its leaven, to evangelize, to be a sign of God's goodness and love, to be Christ in the world, to be that city set on a hill, that lamp set on a stand for all to see in the darkness, to be a moral compass, that beacon of light and hope that the world desperately needs. And so physically, we want to express that spiritual reality by lighting up the outside walls of the cathedral. There is another element, too, and that is we want this building to uh, stand out in a, in a civic way, too, uh, to be proud of this magnificent cathedral, and not just proud of the, the physical building itself, but really to have a sense of pride as to who we are as Cathedral Parish. And we are accomplishing that, and I'm very proud of this parish. I really am, and I hope you sense that as well. Now, you've seen the rendering of what this is going to look like. It's in the gathering area. It's quite impressive. And so we're still raising some necessary funds to pull this off. But more than just money issue, it's, this is going to be kind of a fun way to help uh, give us um, an esprit de corps, that corporate identity as the body of Christ. Not everybody can write a big fat check, um, but so what we want to do is make up these uh, t-shirts with that rendering on it and to have a limited edition. And it'll depict exactly, you know, pretty much what you see. And uh, the, it'll be like $50 a t-shirt with 100% of the proceeds going to the, um, the, the lighting effort. And of course, that will be matched by a donation. So there's a hundred bucks you can contribute uh, that way and to be uh, a part of something wonderful. Okay, now today I want to talk about something a little tragic that has a silver lining, something that happened in the early church. The Acts of the Apostles records an incident. Barnabas said to the people that it was necessary that we speak the word of God to you, my Jewish friends, first. But you have rejected the word of God, and therefore you have condemned yourself as unworthy of eternal life. You sold your birthright. That's pretty harsh words. But the silver lining is that message went outward to all the world, to the Gentiles, to all of us sitting here today. The question is, would you choose to condemn yourself as unworthy of eternal life by rejecting the word of God? And assuredly, you give me a swift, no, of course not. Why would I do that? But if we understand that the word of God is that full revelation, the deposit of faith, the totality of the church's teaching made fully present in the Catholic Church, one could ask that question this way. Would you reject the Catholic faith or maybe just a part of it? Should I reject some of it, none of it? Well, the ideal answer is none of it because to reject it is to reject eternal life, or at least a little shade of it, a little part of it. It's not easy to be a Catholic. 
right? It's not easy whatsoever. Because we teach a hard truth. Christ teaches a hard truth through his body. And the church delivers a, a message of eternal life, but it's by embracing truth, who is Jesus. It's not easy to understand and accept all of the church's teachings. Case in point, once again, we are back in 1962. A young lady by the name of Diane Kazakowski graduated from the newly constructed Stanley Boyd High School in Stanley. And in November of that year, she married my father. That's what everybody did back then, was get married right away. And my sister Karen was born in December of 63. My brother Tom in April of 65, interestingly enough, on my mother's birthday. Well, things weren't going well, and so that was evidence in a divorce that took place 25 years later after five children. And at that time in my mother's difficult life, the parish was hosting a parish mission, kind of that old-fashioned, week-long thing where an outside preacher came in, gave talks and conferences and adoration and benediction and all of that. And my mother saw where things were going and living in a very tumultuous period of her life, she thought that a third child at that time was just maybe not the best thing to do. And she was kind of doing this all alone. And so the idea of contraception came up. This is 1965. And of course, the definitive decision by St. Paul VI didn't come down until 1968. However, it was on the air. Everybody was kind of saying, well, maybe this is a legitimate path forward in the church. And there was a great big study done on this. And so my mother took this issue to the church to the priest in confession, who roundly said, no, you cannot do that. Was it difficult for my mother? Absolutely. But with humility and obedience, she gave her assent to the church's authority and its teaching. She said yes to the voice of the Good Shepherd. She began to wash her robes in the blood of the Lamb to make them white. And as a result, I am that third child. I was born in September of 66, and 11 months later, my sister Jill followed in August of 67. She chose not to reject the Word of God, but to embrace it in all of its fullness and glory and life. She embraced eternal life by following the narrow, difficult way, by embracing the full beauty of the truth of Catholicism. And her sacrifice gave birth to something more. And I, for one, am very grateful that my mother said yes to the church. Otherwise, I won't be here. That one decision allows me to stand here before you as your shepherd and has brought me into your lives. And for that, I am extremely grateful. My heart is filled with great joy at being the rector of the cathedral, your shepherd with boots on the ground in, in the bishop's parish. Motherhood is a beautiful gift its tenderness, its nurturing qualities. And I would, in a poetic say, in a poetic way, even say that tenderness of a mother is found in the heart of God, in Jesus, the Good Shepherd himself, who is always so tender. And really some of the most courageous, beautiful, hardworking, world life-changing 
people I know are mothers. So thank you for who you are and saying yes to all that God has asked of you. O oh, Mary conceived without sin. Saint Joseph the workman. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God the Father sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. We beg him now for the fullness of life as we pray. For the bishops, the shepherds of the church, that they will be filled with zeal and have the heart of Christ, the Good Shepherd, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That those who govern will favor truth, justice, and a commitment to peace, especially for the unborn, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers, that through the intercession of the Mother of God, that the Lord will bless them and reward them for their sacrifices of love, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone astray like sheep, that they will hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, the guardian of their souls, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian families, that they will honor Christ as Lord in their hearts and homes, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to hear and follow the voice of Jesus in all that we do, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the Cathedral Parish for whom this Mass is being offered, may we open wide the doors of our hearts to Christ, who is our beacon of light and hope, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you sent your Son and raised him from the dead so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Keep us obedient to our new life in him. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and William our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially all members of Cathedral Parish. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Uh, please be seated for a moment because we have to make sure our moms get their blessings. And uh, really, so today is our kind of our pro-life little effort. Um, so there's roses available for mom. Uh, make a contribution and all of that goes to a pro-life cause which at this time in the history of our nation I think would be a very worthy effort so please get mom a beautiful rose to thank her for all that she has done uh, for you so the other thing uh, again uh, there is a, a, a shirt a, a t-shirt table um, you can see what it looks like and you can even uh, reserve your um, since it's a limited edition, you can make a reservation with your size. So uh, scope that out. And also, moms, there's not much left. Sorry about that, but you guys get the leftover. There is uh, some Mother's Day uh, little gifts, a little token of our uh, cathedral's appreciation for you as moms is by the roses. So, all right, moms, do you want to please stand for your blessing? So my first year as a uh, pastor in Tomo, I made the fatal mistake of forgetting the Mother's Day blessing. Boy, oh boy, that was not good. I never ever do that again. So happy to give you this uh, blessing and um, just to thank you and acknowledge you for the beautiful people that you are. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. So if there's any kids out there, a spirit of profound respect. In other words, be good to mom. And if you don't, I'll see you in the confessional and then I'll give you a penance that forces you to be nice to mom. So you don't want to do that. So, well, enjoy the rest of your day and celebrate well. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in a peace announcing the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.